So LLMs are selling like cupcakes these days. What I want to talk about is, you know, the emerging LLM stack that started with the library called Langchain. And now we have plethora of applications, frameworks, libraries that enable you to build your own app using LLM. And everybody is trying to, you know, probably achieve similar results and they have similar use cases. You know, people want to bring their own data, put it into some sort of a store and then use LLM to power that and answer interesting questions. This kind of architecture is called RAG, which is Retrieval Augmented Generation. And what we'll do today is we'll take a look at the emerging LLM stack architecture and we'll take a look at a couple of different frameworks. So let's get started. All right, before we go in further, welcome to Cafe IO. Cafe IO mein aapka swagat hai. And if you have not subscribed to my channel, I talk about tech, AI, software architecture. So please subscribe, hit the thumbs bell like button. If you like it, share the video. Let's get started. So this stack that you see right now, it's it's probably a very generic architecture. And the reason I picked this is to talk about, you know, how could you, if you have such use cases, choose to build apps using LLMs. And most of the cases you'll find similar architectures. So I'll probably go and spend a couple of minutes here. Now, let's start on the absolutely right side. This, this article, I'll put it in the description, by the way, in case people you are interested. It was published in Data Science Dojo, so big shout out to them. What you see on the right hand side is actually the LLM which is hosted. Now LLMs, since they are very large models, they need high computational capabilities. So right now they are available from public cloud providers like Anthropic, uh, sorry, they are available from providers like OpenAPI, Anthropic, etc, etc. And there's open source models. And then the deployment platforms are really, you know, some cloud uh, providers like AWS, GCP, Azure and whatnot. There's some opinionated clouds as well. Like, for example, you can deploy them on Databricks if you choose to, if you want to. And so this whole box is kind of the LLM API and hosting. Now, what you do is you interact with this using APIs in most of the cases. And then towards the left hand side is really the app stack, uh, you know, prompt tuning, bringing your data and we'll talk about that. So let's look at the central engine, which is the orchestration, orchestrator, right? This is something that's usually or presently written mostly in Python. There are some, uh, you know, ports for Node.js and JavaScript as well. And you have libraries such as Langchain, ChatGPT, Llama Index, Flowwise, etc. that could do this orchestration. Now these two are the, you know, key and core element in my view. And then let's start to look at what you have. So you have some app hosting where you have, where you typically see the output. Now this is where the users are consuming this. And uh, you know, this is where your play query comes also. So you put a query here and then it goes to the orchestration, right? And then what happens, it, it goes to, you know, some sort of prompt tuning, prompt tweaking, etc. And then when prompt engineering happens, it comes back to this orchestrator. And in supporting this conversation, there could be a couple of other things. You could have different APIs, plugins. You know, if you have automation set in like Zapier, Wolfram, for example, you're querying some external data and whatnot. And then on top, you have your contextual layer, which is your data pipelines, where you are using, you know, orchestrators to bring in your own data. You have some kind of an embedding model, which you use, which you build on top of your data and you have a vector database it could be in the form of a pine cone vv8 pg vector etc that's again used to add value to the search and bring in the contextual awareness into it so this image is very self-explanatory but so in a nutshell what's happening is you bring your query it goes to an app typically kind of a chat interface it could be you know a couple of different kinds of interfaces definitely possible goes to the orchestrator the orchestrator tries to figure out if there's you know some sort of prompt tuning requires which it does and then it goes to you know collecting contextual awareness from vector databases it goes to collecting different data from different apis and all that and then there's you know these supplementary options these are more like you know what you see over here which is llm cache logging ml ops llm ops and validations these are more like cross-cutting concerns where you know cache is used for tweaking 
or you know speeding up your operations or to calls ml ops or llm ops is you know taking care of the ops part logging etc and validations could be you know generating some validations on the out you can you may or may not have this depending on you know how mature uh, is your life cycle around ai building ai application and then what the orchestrator is doing is hitting the apis with a good prompt and the you know the vectorized information converted into some sort of a context and then you get in the response from llm goes back to the orchestrator and you hit back to the app hosting so that's that's basically the story that uh, you know is being played nowadays when we talk about emerging llm stack now let's move further uh, into the next part again shout out if you're still listening please subscribe so we'll start the conversation with langchain and langchain is you know the library that uh, kind of is first it's it helps you build your context aware app your reasoning applications with the flexible apis and tons of uh, you know automations and connections connectors that we have I'll probably talk about in a second and uh, you know you can take your app to prod so as i was saying it has python and javascript version and uh, you know it has the entire set you know all the shebang prompts vector stores text processing all that this is where uh, langchain is really shining these days it has close to 524 integrations which is just crazy if you see the amount of you know store icons that it has it's there for example you want to look for snowflake it's there snowflake you want to do redshift okay redshift is not there let's look at azure azure blob loaders are there you know s3 buckets are there tons of different you know places where you can do if you have pdfs you can do that unstructured data structured data markup data APIs data, PubSub, JSONs, all kinds of, uh, you know, different uh, data sets and client libraries are available. So Langchain is really, really, uh, you know, hitting the right boxes when it comes to, uh, you know, building a library and framework. So let's go back to Langchain. And uh, yeah, that, that's what Langchain is, right? I, I have already done a video on Langchain. If you want to take a look at it, please check out the video before should be somewhere up in the recommendation side of it. Langchain recently introduced something called as Langsmith, which is probably a extended framework and platform. And what you can do is, apart from building, which is test and evaluate, you can actually debug and monitor it. So it kind of takes care of the entire cycle. So what you see over here, it helps you, you know, gaining a good degree of debug information out uh, you can build your traces you can build your prompt level visibility you can get real-time insights and all of that really really cool stuff you can do obviously test and evaluate and finally you can do in-depth monitor about all the kpis that uh, you want to uh, you know check from your llms and that's what is uh, langsmith it doesn't really help you in building it but rather help you in deploying it so they kind of go hand in hand all right Let's move on to a next feature, next product. It's called Langdoc. And I don't know why everyone's trying to write the word Lang uh, these days, probably because of language. So this is another chat GPT like interface for your team. Th this is less build your own app, but more bring your own data. What you can do is it's an interactive chat assistant for your teams and you can have tons of different privacy settings. I think if you see the way it sells itself, it's, you know, by a GDPR, compliant uh, library so that's that's really cool it's a paid service it's not free it's not a free library or anything uh, not extremely pricey but uh, you can definitely check it out where it excels is it has all the models in one platform gpt 3.5 4 llama claude luminous tons of different model coming in the ecosystem privacy and security that's how they're selling it i think this is purpose made for europe where there's you know, definitely a scope and I think ChatGPT might be having a hard time setting up a market there. You can obviously upload documents and you can ask query about it. You can do collaboration. You can do department wise uh, custom assistance, which is really, really useful. Probably, you know, sales department might want to track different assistant, you know, HR might want different and so on and so forth. So yeah, this is all about making your teams more efficient with LLM. I would call this a SaaS rather than a library. But the reason I bought it, it is, you know, it bridges the gap very nicely. 
moving forward gradient j really love the name finally somebody who's moving out of the lang bandwagon and this is uh, some kind of a workflow builder so you can you know build deploy your stuff your llm app end to end manage it it's it's a complete llm development platform as they sell it it's not really very popular these days as far as i think uh, it has very similar features that you could probably get in langchain and langsmith combined but it does throw a little bit of pass flavor out of the box like you know being able to do some drag and drop if you want to do some fine tree tuning you can do that using a ui and all that stuff it's good uh, but i think it needs more evolution now uh, before it flows as a complete product flowwise is another uh, product it's it's very nice and uh, complete it's kind of a ui visual tool to do your customized llm flow so as you probably saw in this first diagram there's tons of arrows going all over the place and you might be doing much more communication so what flow flowwise tries to solve is you know uh, effectively it it gives you a ui uh, it's something like a this uh, i'll probably try to zoom in yeah it's this kind of an interface so you have an open landscape where you can drag drop different components like you can have a prompt template you can have an llm chain you can have open ai connector you can have you know custom query and stuff like that uh, and you using that you can build your app so idea is to build app itself but you can bring in and tie different sources together so probably if you you know see a simple example for a translator what it is doing is you know you you get some sort of you know prompt template where it says you are a helpful assistant that translate the language to an output language and a human message is input you know it goes to an llm chain input language is english and french and then it goes to open api ai and open api and get it sorry not open api open ai my bad uh, and similarly you can have conversational bots which are uh, you know much more deeper and much more fluey in sense so this is solving a very similar problem effectively this but what it is giving you is it's giving you a complete ui to do this or uh, to do that and that's that's really cool i really liked it it's uh, at least i don't know if it's completely yeah it's open source it's apache 2.0 licensed uh it's available on github uh, so you can check it out or uh, the library i am pretty sure you should you might be able to probably deploy it on your own as well yes you just need node or you can run it within a docker environment so that's what it is uh i really liked uh, this uh, and i think a combination of this using langchain and all could work very very nice last in the list is you know llama index this is also very popular it is probably trying to be in the same space but uh, has probably and is growing very similar to i think the way uh, uh langchain is growing it also has mit license so you can it was called previously gpt index and it's kind of a data it was marketed as a data framework but now i think it's a more uh, it's it's a complete ecosystem for doing it so it provides the key to augment your llms with it can do data ingestion data indexing query interface which is what uh, you know working with llms is mostly about uh you can build different kinds of use cases you can do document qna which is a very standard use case uh data augmented chatbots knowledge agent and structured analytics which is something where you know highly uh, required by a lot of people supports all different kinds of data very very similar to langchain in the features and capability and i think this is, can be a good alternative if you are trying to start with this space all right so yeah those are the frameworks that i wanted to talk about uh, again trying to repeat langchain langsmith langdoc gradient j flowwise and llama index these are some of the good ones out there there's much more out there but i think i i kind of filtered the very recent ones and that has probably lesser adoption so yeah if you are trying to build up applications using llms these are your tools to begin with all right all the best if you have more questions about llm shoot in the comment box cheers bye bye